Hi and welcome to A Punk With Toys. My name is Lawrence. Today we're going to take a look at Hasbro's G.I. Joe Classified Crimson Guard. So we're going to open them up. We're going to look at them. We're going to review them. And then we're going to also compare them to an original O-Ring figure. So before we get started, if you don't mind, hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. And hit that bell notification so you're notified every single time that I do one of these videos. Because guess what? I do a lot of reviews, and if you like G.I. Joe, you're going to get hit with a lot of these because I review every single classified uh, figure that comes out. So, enough with that. This is what you want to look at. So, we're going to quickly take a look at this and in the box, and let's see if we can get rid of that glare a little bit. And let me just say, this figure looks amazing. I haven't even opened them up. I only ordered one. Actually, I ordered a bunch. I canceled, but I'll, give you, I'll be getting more eventually. I'm not a big in-box collector i'm gonna miss when this is gone i'm not gonna lie i truly am gonna miss it so anyway just looking at this you see his loadout we've got the m16 he's got the bayonet he's got a sword pistol backpack he's got this wonderful artwork and again they look so cool because you know it's one thing when you have like two storm shadows but when you have an army builder it looks awesome because they're gonna be grouped together on the side, he is number 50, and here's your file card again. I haven't been to this website in years, so the file card means absolutely nothing to me. And on the back, again, once the window is gone, we will be losing this. But here we have all the figures that have come out or that are coming out. I'm trying to look and see where the Crimson Guard is even on this, so maybe you're able to find it. So anyway, enough of this. Let's open them up. Let's review them. Let's compare them to the O-ring because I'll tell you what, just looking at this figure through the box, he looks absolutely amazing. And if I was, if I wasn't a collector, I just was a guy that had G.I. Joe in the past and I was walking down the aisle and I saw, talking about seeing a figure on the aisle that's G.I. Joe, that's almost unheard of. So anyway, but I would not if I saw it, I'd be like, I gotta have that because he is one of the coolest looking figures from the old ring line and he looks like this in classified so let's take a look at him all right so here we have it he's out of the box and quickly we'll take a look at the box again and you can see there's three crimson guard right there they actually gave him a different weapon i'm not really sure why they haven't even made these weapons yet in classified i guess this one here he does have it but again this is going to be one of the last boxes that have come out. So we look here, here he's kind of holding it. He's clearly ceremonial. And then you have the back and number 50. We looked at that. Let's take a look at the figure because that's what we want to see because I think most of you guys are here are going to be opener. So we're just going to quickly look at him. He stood right up. Let's see if there's any tight joints on him. So his neck moves back and forth, not loose. He gets his T-pose. He's got pinless double joints. No issues bending them. They don't get full range because it's they obviously have some issues with just the space. Bends there. You have your elbow or your elbows, your wrists, bicep. There you have your Jean-Claude Van Damme splits. And again, if you want to drop down the hips, that is the best way to do it. Don't yank on them. Pull them out into the Jean-Claude Van Damme splits. And then when you want to push it back up, push it back up. Again, I've said before, I'm not a huge fan of the drop down hips, but I do understand the reason. Let's see, double jointed knees. No issues there. You can almost kick his butt. But I'm gonna say, let's bend this one here and take a look. And the same issue as you have with some like the Valiverse. This one, because there's nothing here, he can pretty much kick his butt. But here, the strap is going to prevent him from going up all the way. But again, how many of us can really bend our knees that, that much? So, not a concern of mine. And then you have the thigh swivel, boot cut, ankle rockers. You always got to be careful and 
Wow, wow, wow. Look at this. Right off the bat, I'm going to have a complaint, but I'm trying to say. You know what? Now, it's hard to tell, but at first I thought the feet were on swath between the left and the right. But now that I'm looking at it, it's hard to tell. The boots are obviously not. But the feet kind of look like they are at a certain angle, but then they look like they're symmetrical. So I'm not sure. I think it's just all in my head. <laughs> Sorry, I, again, this is what happens when you look at something for the first time. Like at some angles, I'm looking over my phone here doing this. It kind of looks like it's not right, but then I look at it and so I think I'm just going a little, I'm going just a little nuts looking at this. I think it's actually the cut of it. Yeah, I think it's just me going a little crazy. So anyway, there is our figure. He comes with his, with an M16 with bayonet. And this is a softer, but not rigid, uh, rigid plastic. Barrel is a little bent. That's a little disappointing. Not too bad. I've seen a few. I've seen some that are worse. Probably heat it up and bend it back to where it needs to be there. It actually looks fine. So I just kind of heat it up and bend it back. Again, it'd be nice if we didn't have to do that with any of these. But everything else, it's a fairly straight. I've, I mean, we've had some Marvel Legends and different things like that that they're just absolutely horrible. You get a nice silver painted blade, so that looks nice. And then you have the magazine that clips. Let's see which way does it go. I'm not sure which way it goes here. I think that this would be pretty. Oh, there you go. That fits nice. Looks really nice. You have his sheath, which is definitely bent. There's no denying that. And considering the sword isn't bent. I definitely have to say that I'm going to have to heat that up. Or else my sword is going to be extremely bent. So that's disappointing. But not the not the end of the world. And it's soft enough that you can even see that it's flexing. In here we have some paint apps. It looks nice. This really reminds me of the swords that I used to get. My dad used to get his martinis when we'd go out to eat. You'd always try and put them in the your G.I. Joe hand. And they always snap the thumb off. Then we have the knife, again, painted blade. It looks nice. Has a cobra, it looks like, on the end. So nice attention to some detail here. And then we have his sidearm. I think that looks nice. No paint abs, just nice and, nice and solid black. And then you have his backpack, which is clearly the one thing that stands out more than anything. Compared to the original, is that it's not red, it's black. So how will it look on him? That's what we'll find out in a second. So let's get into comparing an O-ring figure to the classified. So I'll take off his gun. Nicely remove the stand, because it can always break pretty easily. And then remove the backpack. All right, so let's see here. Move this back. All right, so he's got a huge cobra symbol. Oh, you know what I didn't look at? The ab crunch. So he's got the ab crunch. I'm not a huge fan of the ab crunch. I do think like the way the rocker looks, but in hand they look much better than you would think. So he's got a huge cobra symbol. Clearly much bigger than the O-ring one, but so looks good. Looks like they have the same rank and insignia up on the uh, on the chest here, over the heart. So this one is painted, but as you might imagine, this would probably be painted or be colored in real life. It's got his little straps on here. Now this isn't silver like these are, but you could clearly tell they were trying to watch their cost by just making everything. So I do like it, and they move, so it's not just matted onto the figure. So here, the buttons are silver, 
Now you can see on these, they do have buttons, they just didn't paint them. So I like that attention to detail. Matter of fact, it goes all the way down to the crotch. Again, something I never really paid attention to, but this follows all the way down. And then you have this little V here. I don't think it's supposed to be a V, just the way that it looked on the O-ring figure. I'll open it up. So you turn him to the side here. He does have his little pouch right there, along with the pouch. Now they gave him a knife here. So how does the knife look? So this is something that was added to change it from the O-ring, which I don't mind. And then you look at the side and you have the pinstriping that goes down, but it actually stops right here. Now I'm assuming that's actually how this was supposed to be but they just wanted to make the paint go all the way down because this is definitely two different textures here. So this is a different, this is supposed to look like an overlay and then he's got the pant underneath it. So we'll look at the boot here and the boot is cut the exact same way. It has a little pouch up there. They did a wonderful job. They do a wonderful job of redoing almost line for line what was in the original. Here the boot, we have the buckle, little strap that goes over it. And how does the O-ring look? It has the same thing, strap over it, buckle here. They just didn't bother to paint that because once again, they're trying to get their money out of the cost of an O-ring. On the side, same thing. Now they gave him an actual holster, which probably makes more sense where this just looks like it's integrated into the pant and it also looks like it's more of a uh, shipwreck style uh, pistol, which I don't understand why you would do that. Here they removed the pouch, but that's because you can put the sheath and the sword there. He has his cobra symbol here, which the O-ring Technically has it on the front, but really it should be on the side the way this is. And then on the top, they kind of changed the color. They did a gray, but they did put the little arrow on it, just making it look like it has obviously the exact same. Well, supposed to be very similar. All the way to the back. Now, the one thing they don't have is spurs. So the original ones had spurs on it. They removed the spurs, which I'm fine with. It would have been kind of cool if they kept it, but. So now let's look at the face. And they obviously have the same emblem on the side, on the, on the front, painted silver. And on the masks, they painted the ventilation silver. And if you hit the right angle, the visor actually is silver, it's not all black. Because it's so thin, it actually does look like it's black because the black is actually shining off of it. Where this one here, it just rings out that it is silver. So, side by side comparison, these things are pretty close. Now we'll take a look at the, we'll look at the backpack first. So the backpack is a nice, it's a soft rubber, it actually feels really nice. And here is our, our original o-ring and in the middle they both have the cobra symbol but obviously this one here is painted they have the buckles down here but here they just kind of made it look like there's more buttons the buckles obviously make a lot more sense and then you got the little detail in the serration just going right up it this here I'm not really sure I guess it's made because see how that kind of stuck out on the bottom? They did the same thing there, I guess, so you could grab it, maybe walk with it. And on the side here, they post they put a post or a peg so you can put the gun on the side. And then here they left a hole so you can post the sheath up there if you want. So, 
take that off. Here is our pistol. Again, it looks nice. I love pistols when I was a kid. I always wanted pistols for the O-ring and you just didn't have them. Now I have an abundance of them and don't need them. Then it fits in really nice. It's obviously a different style pistol than what he has here. Because once again, it says like a shipwreck, but I'm glad that they did this because it makes way more sense. And then we will get to his rifle. And I'm going to say this is one of my biggest disappointments. I think this M16 looks awesome. I do. I want it taken off. I want to use it for grunt. I want something very similar to this for airborne. But I really wanted this, I'm going to assume, made up weapon for my Crimson Guard. I'm not going to complain about it, but when I do see M16s, M4s, anything like that, I think of the good guys. I think of U.S. military, you know, other military that may be associated with us, not a terrorist organization. And yes, before someone makes a comment, I understand M16s are also used by bad guys. <laughs> but I do think they did a really nice job. They have now an M16 mold. They gave him the bayonet, which I think was very imperative that they did that. Obviously, they have the the handle so you can walk around with it. But I really wanted something like this. But hey, can't get everything now, can we? And I'm okay with that. But it's something I'm definitely going to point out. So, pop that on him. So there we go with that. Get the rifle in his hand. And can we get the trigger finger in? Make sure the hole is big enough. Okay, so the hole is big enough. You just kind of got to adjust it a little bit. No issues there. Looks really nice. I do love the way that this, the way the sleeves cover the, the arm or the hand. The way the sleeves cover the hand, go over the wrist. I think that looks awesome. I like the fact that they gave a ceremonial sword, or even a fighting sword, I guess. Maybe it's not just a ceremonial. This is something that clearly, in my opinion, was the idea of the Iron Grenadier. Because they were the ones that, that had this. I like it on the side, but clearly it's going to get in the way. But this is a perfect figure for your guardsmen, obviously, Crimson Guard. But I think on the side probably makes more sense if you're going into battle. But there he is. That is your G.I. Joe Crimson Guard. I am going to say right off the bat, not right off the bat, <laughs> <laughs> We're almost 20 minutes in this video. I am going to say that I like the red backpack just a little better. It definitely seems to make more sense. It doesn't look bad because it definitely goes with the belt. You know, your your uh, uh, your holster, your boots. So it goes with it. But I just think the red pops a little bit better. And I like the way that it looks. But I think we're getting that with the other Crimson Guard that's already coming. So let's wrap this up because I have gone on for quite some time. But I hope you got a good look at this figure. Alright, so there you have it. The review of the G.I. Joe Classified Crimson Guard. And the comparison of him to the O-Ring. And as you can see, they're very, very similar. And they look absolutely amazing. I do love this figure. He was one of my favorite figures growing up. I think they did a wonderful job. They recreate him so good, so to the T. And when my biggest complaint with the overall aesthetics is the black backpack, it's something I can get over. Again, they talk about how they need to make some changes. I agree, but seeing the or seeing the original it makes me definitely like the red a little better. And then the other complaint that I have is just like the barrel of the gun being a little bent and obviously the sheath being 
vent and so i have to fix that now, i understand that's part of the game i do but again i'll say for the price that we're starting to pay for these figures there's no reason why i should have to this is stuff that should be rectified and i swear to god if i hear that the all plastic packaging going away is going to resolve that i'll probably scream because i don't believe that so anyway this is your classified figure he looks awesome he's solid uh no need to heat him right out of the package again it's still like in the 80s so maybe that's the reason but i haven't had any issues with the um with the hasbro plastic that they use and different things like that so anyway i'm gonna wrap it up uh, if you're in a position to help the channel there's a few ways um one social media a punk with toys on instagram and twitter the facebook page is punks with toys Another way that is definitely going to help is the Amazon partnership. I'll post a link to Amazon down there. You don't have to buy anything, but it'll link. And then when you scroll around, it just shows people, hey, you know what? This guy's coming to the page. He's looking at stuff. Unfortunately, Amazon doesn't have him up there, and I don't know why. That I can't figure out. Unless I post a link to this figure, I got him from BBTS. But either way, for some odd reason, I can't find him on Amazon. But... Hey, you know how it goes. So anyway, uh, last call I'm going to say, subscribe, like, and hit the bell notification so you know, hey, this guy's got a new classified review. This guy has a new Motu review. This guy has a new Valiverse review, which I know you guys absolutely love, even though some of you say you're a total Valiverse hailer. I don't get it. So anyway, I'm going to get out of here. Once again, a punk with toys here. Have a wonderful night and happy toy hunting.